I will add a quick disclaimer before I go on to this next one. I, I grew up in New Jersey, so if I mispronounce anything, just blame it on the Northeast. Our next speaker is Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Hilgendorf. He is transitioning to a civilian life after an awesome 20 year military career. He currently serves at the Pentagon as a senior informant and information security manager for the U.S. Air Force, where he leads cybersecurity strategy and policy initiatives supporting 660,000 personnel across the globe and an IT portfolio valued at $17 billion. Prior to his current assignment, Patrick led 361 airmen delivering command, control, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance support for counter-terrorism operations in Africa and ballistic missile defense in Europe. He also served at Joint Special Operations Command where he jumped out of perfectly good airplanes and deployed innovative airborne full motion video surveillance across Iraq and Afghanistan. Patrick earned a BS in electrical engineering from Louisiana State University. Uh, it's, it's spelled Goox, so. <laughs> Uh, an MS in Electrical Engineering from Wright State University, CISSP Certificate, and CIAC Certified Incident Handler Certification. Patrick and his wife April are excited to trade Washington DC area traffic jams for Gulf Coast living. I can understand that. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Hilgendorf. I can tell you graduated with a New Jersey public school education. You can't pronounce go, huh? <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Patrick Kilgendorf, and I'm excited to be here. Uh, thanks to Ms. Danielle Lee for the opportunity to share my transition experience out of the military. Uh, next month, I'm trading in the uniform for uh, coat and tie, but I'm kind of wondering, are there any fun, good jobs out there, right? Uh, don't get me wrong, I've had a great career. Uh, I got to meet a lot of amazing people. Had a lot of fun jobs, a couple of crappy jobs, literally, and then uh, had a pretty good career. So what's next? I, I pulled up some advice from Dad from high school. Let me read it to you. It says, young man, there's no need to feel down. It says, I was once in your shoes. I was down and out with the blues. There's a place you can go when you're short on your dough. It says, I'm sure you will find many ways to have a good time, right? And he was right. I mean, this civilian career is going to be awesome. I get to grow my beard out. I get to go maybe wrestle some alligators with my new friend Dwayne Green from Thibodeau. You back there, man? Where you at? So, this is going to be awesome out here. Mardi Gras is on. It's going to be good to be at the Gulf Coast. Uh, but seriously, though, I have to do some soul searching, right? How do I find that unicorn job that balances that fun job, work environment, plus uh, what do you want to do on the side out there, right? I came across two books that I thought might be useful for you guys. I'm going to share some wisdom out of it. The first one was a book called The 4-Hour Workweek, and the premise is, why wait till you're 60 years old to take and retire and enjoy life? I was telling Janet uh, Buzzkirk from ComTech last night that uh, I'm ready to come to the beach. You got my resume, Janet? Where you at? I'm ready. Just call me. Uh, the next book is Design Your Life. It's a bunch of Stanford guys are teaching kids how to uh, decide whether or not they want to be a doctor, a lawyer, or the next dot-com success out there. A lot of pressure on these guys, and this has really generated a, a lot of good lessons learned. So myth number one, great careers aren't necessarily derived from passion. I want to be a fishing boat uh, guy, but uh, I'm not saying I suck at it, but I may not be able to make a living out of it. So I might have to go back to the drawing board on that, right? Myth number two is that uh, great careers are not necessarily derived from success. You got a guy that was actually a doctor and good at it, and he gave all that up because he wanted to do something else. Maybe chasing that passion was probably not a myth, but he's doing pretty good right now, right? So rolling the dice out there is pretty good on him. Uh, the last myth is it's too late to start a new career. Colonel Sanders was 62 years old before he took and started his franchise. I don't know if you guys know, uh, Julia uh, Child was 50 years old before she was uh, transferred from a CIA agent to a cookbook author out there, so pretty good on her. Uh, a couple lessons learned for you here. Uh, most people give the military folks advice and say, hey, what do you want to do? Where do you want to live? How much money do you want to make? I decided on the Gulf Coast, so I'm hoping, Janet, you can help me figure out the, what I'm going to do and how much I'm going to make here pretty soon, right? Um, but I thought, there's got to be more in life, right? Why can't you have both? Why can't you have the fun? And why can't you have the career? And so I did a couple of uh, uh, researching on what else I could do out here, and I've come to the conclusion I'm going to take and balance the... Um, Career initiatives with uh, outgrowth and community service out here. 
Uh, lesson number two is how do I find that? How do I find those opportunities? You've got to be curious, right? Um, a couple of these guys out here, you just don't know what exists out here. Navy Federal Credit Union is out here. You've got Baptist Health. There's a lot of stuff that's non-DOD that I was just shocked to find out was down here. So uh, the, the other thing you've got to do is stalk. You've got to talk to these guys. You get on LinkedIn. You cyber stalk them. You get on the Facebook out there. You find out what the interests are. You schmooze them. You buy them a drink out on the beach. And the next thing you know, you're getting phone calls out here, right? Uh, lesson number three is ask for help. This is kind of like dating, right? The more people you ask, you increase your odds of getting some good advice out here, right? And so sometimes people don't give you advice, but you'll find that a lot of folks have been in your shoes before, and then other people are good looking for that referral bonus that they hire you on. So it's a win-win for these guys out here. Lesson number four, you got to peel that mandate off, man. You just got to do it. You got to roll the dice sometimes and go for it. Uh, sometimes, though, in life, we have an expression in the military, uh, the best laid plans do not survive contact with the enemy. You got to have a backup plan. You got to take a couple of bruises and cuts along the way, and it's okay. Uh, you'll get through it, and then you'll be the better for it. Now, lesson number five is it's a process, right? So I wanted to talk to you, the military folks out here, about uh, your potential out here. Just because you were captain on the senior football team does not mean you're starting when you're a freshman out here. Same thing in the civilian industry out here. You got to earn your keep out there, and you got to prove your value, which is okay. But here are a couple of myths for you guys that are transitioning with your mid-career uh, in the middle of life out here. A couple of lessons learned for you you might try out. Uh, I wish you the best of success with whatever you do in your future endeavors. Uh, I wanted to close with a good news story out here. Through this networking event out here, I landed an interview last week and I accepted a job offer like 45 minutes ago in the parking lot. Thank you very much, everybody.